quite removed. Her head was flung back and her breathing was very slow. She whispered. So I sat with her, uncovering the body of my close eye and watched the stars fade. When the stars were invisible, I went back to the house. My mother was standing on the porch watching. She said, wrapping her thin, strong arms around. Pat may have saved the day by finding the last minute replacement leader for the camping trip, but he had no idea how huge a price he'd pay for his little scheme. The Outing by Patrick F. McManus. You would have thought I was the first person in history to receive a dishonorable discharge from the Cub Scouts. <laughs> what initiated the whole disaster was Mr. Wilson's getting sick, thus leaving our den of Cubs without an adult leader for our first overnight outing. husband into taking us on an overnight camping trip. Ford's chair back against the slab wall of his shed. <coughs> Tell me again, what was it Mrs. Slocum called me? A gentleman. <laughs> Rancid nodded thoughtfully, apparently in agreement with this assessment of his character. How come you and the widow Slocum was talking about me anyways? Oh, why... She's the den mother of us cubs. Her son Richie's a cub, and every week we meet the Slocum Mansion to tie knots and stuff. Boy, is she ever rich. She's even got two cars. So, what about me? Well, you see, we don't have an adult leader. A gentleman, actually, to take us on an overnight camping trip. So, I volunteered you. You got your nerve. If you think I'm going to nurse me and a bunch of you brats on a camping trip, you've got another thing coming. Just thinking about it makes my rheumatiz act up. Give me that quart jar of my rheumatiz medicine. I handed him the jar and watched him take a big enough swig to cure half the county <laughs> rheumatism. I thought you might feel that way about it. But you know how rich and pretty Mrs. Slocum is. I thought... While you were in picking up us cubs, <laughs> you and her get to talking. And she'd invite you for coffee when you got back. And she'd say, hey, Rinsen, there's something wrong with the light in the bathroom. Do you suppose you could fix it for me? And you'd fix her light, and she'd be so grateful. After a while, you and her go dancing together. And after that, you'd get married, and then you'd be rich. But I suppose you're right. Well, so long, Rancid. I gotta go. Now you just hold on a second. I hardly recognized Rancid when his old pickup rattled up in front of the Slocum Mansion the following Saturday. He was wearing new bib overalls, an old suit jacket, and a reasonably white shirt. His face was clean shaven, but it was pink from all the scrubbing. <laughs> Rancid, you look great! Don't holler! It hurts my hide! Mrs. Slocum swept down the walk from the mansion, holding out her hand. I'm so pleased to meet you, Mr. Crabtree. It's divine of you to take the boys, Captain. <laughs> well, I was a grub once myself. <laughs> You're so amusing, Mr. Crabtree. May I call you Rancid? Sure! By then, all the other cubs would load the gear in the back of the truck and were yelling for us to get started. 
Grants had grinned all the way out of town. <coughs> you see how she wanted to call me Rancid right off? I guess I ain't lost it yet. <laughs> lost what? Ain't none of your business. Rancid drove up along Pack River until he came to a forest service campground. He pulled in and stopped. Okay, Grubs, this is it. Get off and set up camp. Cubs stared at the campground. We don't want to camp here, Mr. Crabtree. This is practically civilization. We want to climb to the top of that mountain where it's wild. We want to climb the mountain. We camp here, it won't be like real camping. Branson slapped his leg. Yo, dang, what am I thinking? Of course it wouldn't be like real camping. You know, it's been at least a week since the bars ate that poor fella up on the mountain. But Dave's probably not real hungry already. Get your packs on and let's go. Wait a minute. <laughs> this campground looks pretty good to me. <laughs> Why don't we just stay right here close to the truck? All the other cubs agreed that the campground was looking better to them all the time. I didn't hear anything about bears eating anybody on the mountain. Ah, shut your yap and go fix a fire. I gotta step behind them trees and prepare my rheumatism for the night on the cold, hard ground. As soon as camp was set up, the cubs started begging Rancid to teach them some nature lore. What's the name of that bird flying around up there, Mr. Crabtree? <sighs> That's an eagle. That's a bald-headed eagle. Bet none of you boys ever seen a bald-headed eagle before. <laughs> Probably went bald from baby eagles asking me so many questions. <laughs> Why don't you just go poke sticks in that fire? That night as we sat around incinerating marshmallows, Branson hunched over the campfire with a blanket around his shoulders. Hey, Mr. Crabtree? What? Why don't you tell us some ghost stories? Something real scary. I don't know no ghost stories. You didn't know anything scary at all? Well... I know one true story that's pretty scary, but it'd probably bore you, Grubs. Nah, I won't tell it. Oh, tell it, Mr. Crouch, you tell it. <laughs> oh, all right. Seems there was this woodcutter lived up in these here mountains. Might still be running around these parts for all, for all I know. Anyhow, this woodcutter, he went crazy. First thing anybody know, he'd gone crazy. They found these campers all cut up in itty bitty pieces. <laughs> crazy old woodcutter must have snuck up on them in the dark of night. What was that? <laughs> Did you grubs hear something? Oh, it probably weren't nothing. Now this crazy old woodcutter. Driving back toward town an hour later, Ransom comes and said, In heaven there is no beer, that's why I drink it here. <laughs> there wasn't any crazy old woodcutter, was there? Who knows, there might have been. Now here's my plan. We go back to my place, you and the other cubs camp out by my shack, and in the morning I haul you back to town and nobody knows the difference. But presently, we came to a roadhouse ablaze with lights. Whoa, Hawks! The night's still young. Let's see what's happening in there. I'll stand you and the other cups with some pops. Follow me. Papa, um, 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 um. <laughs> Looking back, I suppose our little group marching into the roadhouse must have presented something of a spectacle. A tall, lanky mountain man trailed by what seemed to be eight pint-sized Union cowboy men. Branson wandered over to a card game being played by some hard-looking men. That's it. We better go. We're supposed to be camping. Don't pester me, boy. I'm just going to play a few games. Later, all the cubs agreed that it was one of the most interesting nights of our lives. We were referring to the fracas that happened when one of the card players yelled something about cheating. And the card table got knocked over. And Rancid yelled, <laughs> Wait! Fetch me one of them pool cues! We all thought he wanted to play pool with it. <laughs> 
one by one, the parents of the Cubs came down to the sheriff's office in the pretty dawn hours to pick up their son. It was a memorable scene. I particularly remember Mrs. Slocum coming in, grabbing Richie by the hand and heading for the door without saying a word to me or Ransom. I knew right then and there that my career in the Cub Scouts was over. Then Ransom saw Mrs. Slocum dragging Richie out the door. Ma'am! Yes, Mr. Crowntree? Uh, ma'am, I suppose this means you won't be wanting me to fix your bathroom like... <laughs> <laughs> Good night. 